just says it's started the live broadcast. Can you guys see me in YouTube? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you guys aren't there. Okay, if you just tuned in for the special Eve Bolt edition, we're still trying to figure out technical difficulties. I, I don't know what to tell you. So it says we have six, ten viewers, but no Eve and no Steve. <laughs> so, uh, so you guys can't get into that link, huh? Where you guys are? Yep, I'm in it. No, there's no invite others, Steve. Oh, there's invite people, but then, oh, let me see if I can. Let's try this. See if that works. All right, if you just joined, uh, we're just trying. We're a little early, like a minute. Trying to get Eve and Steve into the program. So bear with us. Oh, let me see if you guys are in now. How'd that link work? Oh, I can see Eve now. Okay. I can see Eve and I can see Steve. All right, victory. And now I see just a black screen where I used to be. <laughs> Hang on. Turn on my camera. And now I can't see Steve. Oh, man. <laughs> Hold on. All right. I think I, I think I X'd out the wrong window. Ah. So what, it, would it be weird if, like, we each... Whenever you talk, it, the other one gets blanked out. That would, that would be kind of weird. <laughs> we almost have Steve on. So is there, <laughs> can you see the chat, uh, Eve? Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. Greetings. <laughs> oh, now. How about, how about now? Oh, he's back. Yeah, awesome. Oh, okay. victory. Yes. I, I X'd out the wrong window. <laughs> All right. We're back. And we're live tonight. It's the Steve and Marty live show, really. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've done a bunch of these. And each time we get more and more uh, knowledgeable about our YouTube neighbors. And tonight right. uh, we're super happy to be joined by Eve Bolt, who has an awesome YouTube channel with about 5.8 million subscribers right now. Oh, wow. Not yet, but soon. And soon. Uh, and so Eve does some really fantastic art. She hosts a live event. Well, I think it's called Catter Day. Yep. Catter Day. And, <laughs> uh, and so uh, without any further ado, ado, see, I said it kind of, for you, Eve, in a little bit of a French accent. <laughs> so this is Eve Bolt. Welcome to the program. Hi guys, this is me. <laughs> yeah, first time, um, ever, uh, first time ever live on YouTube where we can see you. Yeah, I am not. That's awesome. That's I am awesome. Not actually, a cat. Sadly. <laughs> ah, so some people think you're. Well, cats have shorter lives, though. So I'm glad. Yeah. In some ways, that you're not a cat. So you <laughs> be with us for a long time. Um, Hopefully. And and Steve, everybody knows my partner Steve from the Mind. When I say partner. I mean that in the platonic sense, just to be clear. Not that there's anything wrong with that, Steve. Partner in crime. Par partner yeah. in crime. Right, exactly. So my video buddy, my YouTube friend, uh, my longtime uh, uh, guy that I admire, Steve Mitchell from the Mind of Watercolor. And if you haven't visited his, don't, doesn't YouTube send you like a trophy every couple of weeks, uh, Steve, because you've surpassed some, <laughs> yeah, some yeah, right. milestone? No, 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 no. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, Steve and I are here tonight, and we welcome you into the conversation as well. Valerie from um, the Drawing with Fire is here. She's going to be the moderator, and she will be moderating the chat room. If you have a question, uh, she'll tell you how to ask that. We'll try to monitor that a little bit later in the program. But at first, it's just all about getting to know Eve and asking her a few questions about how she started out, how she came up, what she likes to do, things like that. Yeah. Sounds, sounds great. Yeah. So this is your first time on screen ever, huh, Eve? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Wow. <laughs> well, your channel is not really all that old, is it? Uh, uh, no. I was looking at it a couple years at the most. Yeah, a year and, uh, a, half? A, year and a half, about. Okay. Or so. Yeah, well, it's it's got some neat, neat stuff. I was really enjoying going through. I mean, you know, when I think of you and I, I kind of see you pop up in my comments every now and then and in, in some of the lives that I've seen. And uh, as I was looking over your stuff today, it's just like, wow, here's this quiet lady that's kind of over in the corner of the YouTube community just doing this really awesome stuff. So <laughs> thank you. I, this is why Marty and I love to do this. It's just great to kind of meet people and talk to them and get to know them. So welcome. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a that's a great welcome, Steve. Thank you for uh, that. And I I kind of feel the same way. So what happens is, you know, I lurk a lot on channels, but I rarely comment. And so sometimes uh, I will just watch people's channels and it's enjoyable. And Eve's is one of the ones I like to drop in from time to time and see what she's up to. So, Eve, can you tell like people who are watching a little bit about how or why you got started, why you decided way up in Montreal where it's winter 10 months out of the year, <laughs> where you decided to uh, do a YouTube channel? What, yeah, what sure. compelled you? Yeah, sure. Um, it started when I realized that I was spending a lot of time on YouTube and watching a lot of videos about paint and painting and you know all kinds of stuff related to that and i realized that i wanted to buy a new set of paints but couldn't find any review on it so i figured i was like well i'm gonna buy this stuff for me and i'm gonna make a video to talk about it because this is the stuff i like i want to talk about paint i want to help people maybe make better choices in paint and and get more acquainted with the the way this works and and i just was really inspired by um videos from from you guys and everyone else you know like lindsay and and like the whole community felt so um inviting that i thought i could try and just create my space on it i have my little nook and just do my thing and and try and really do something that I enjoy doing because that was really different from my work before. So I figured that if I can use YouTube to make videos about the stuff that I like, I will find people that love the same stuff. So I will find a bunch of friends, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that's what happened, really. And I started really small. I started just saying, I'm going to start with just reviews because it's fairly simple. And you just have to stick to the facts and you know review this product. And the more I did that, the more comfortable I get. And also um, speaking in English was really something difficult for me at first. So I had to take the time to get better at that. And you know, it's everything gets better progressively. So um, yeah, and the more friends you make, the more easy this stuff gets. And that's basically what happened. That's uh, interesting. I, I never would have guessed that you had trouble with your English. It seems so good. I, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And right now we're going to need you to repeat everything you said earlier for our French audience. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> uh, well, Eve, that's a, that's a great thing. I mean, it's very similar to why I got started because I got some bad pencils once and I just wanted to make sure people knew about them and <laughs> I looked for a review and no one had a review. So I made one, but um, and, and Steve and you and I all came through different ways to YouTube. I think, mm -hmm. you know, for years and years, Steve uh, was a, a graphic design guy, an artist mm -hmm. with his own practice and business. And um, I 
just worked in IT forever and just done art on the side. But um, how about you? What what's your do you do you do art full time or what is your situation? Uh, um, I started. I studied in graphic design oh. because I used to draw as a hobby, and I was trying to find you know studies that would help me get better at drawing. So the only thing that was available was either um, arts and graphic design. So arts felt a bit too um, unstructured, like not enough focus on learning stuff just, it, well, at the school I was looking for, but it was mostly like expression and and they would come up with the most ridiculous stuff. So I opted for graphic design and it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it was still a good beginning. And then I found out that there was a class um, cartoon animation in Montreal. So I moved from Quebec to Montreal mm. and I studied cartoon animation. And then I worked a bit in that industry, but it wasn't it wasn't the worst, but it wasn't fulfilling. Like I, I wasn't feeling like I was doing something great with myself. So between two jobs, I decided to take a moment and really try and figure out what I want to do. And that's during that time that I decided to start on YouTube. So yeah, I did a bit of everything. Uh, graphic design is more the technical stuff and cartoon animation is really something different. So kind of a mix of the two. So yeah, I guess I am an illustrator. Yeah. That would be the closest it gets to. Uh, That's <laughs> awesome. Steve, have you worked in sequential art? Uh, I'm not know if it's sequential art, you know, that like, isn't, don't you have, isn't SCAD like a famous school for that? I think so. Steve, are you with us? Yeah. Ha, ha, did you ever work in se sequential art? Uh, I didn't. I was I was interested in it, but um, okay. but I didn't uh, train in it or anything like that. I collected comics for a while. You know, that's yeah, as a kid, uh, <laughs> right? And well, even as an, <laughs> even as an adult, frankly, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> Uh, that, you know, that's, uh, I guess, back in the day, they called that sequential art. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I think they still do. So, mm -hmm. Eve, did you do, like, cartoon strips? Like, what kind of cartooning did no, you do? No, uh, it's it's cartoon animation. So, it's um, oh, okay. like like the cartoons you see on TV more. It's not oh, paper. Okay. It's mm -hmm. not uh, 2D. It's really, well, it can be 2D, but it's really more the, you know, the, 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 the aspect of time and movement that's part of it. So it's it's kind of a wide field. So I did a bit of various things. I did some animation, really like character animation. I did some storyboards. Uh, I did like clean up because you get some elements mm -hmm. that are just drawn and you have to, to, to clean them up in, in the software so they can be used digitally. So right. it's kind of a really wide field, but yeah, it's been mostly on local um, TV shows for kids. And it was it was a really special experience. Well, like uh, like French cartoons or cartoons, anything that we'd be familiar with. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think, but it's it was really more of um, like local productions, because sure. Quebec has a a good you know it's kind of small, and Montreal has always been a good place for cartoons, especially many years ago. Um, I kind of got into this at the time where it took a dip. <laughs> ah, so, uh, mm. yeah, but we used to have Sinar, and they would do a lot of co-productions with France. So you would have productions that were done partway in France, partway here, and people here would do, like, paintings for the backgrounds and the animation and, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, and I don't think a lot of these shows have made it in English, but they, they were at least uh, local and perhaps in France as well. Hmm. Cool. Did uh, when you know you uh, mentioned you, you're an illustrator, and you know it's pretty pretty obvious that uh, you're pretty good at that. I think. Uh, oh, did you, you freelance as an illustrator, or did you? Uh, how, what's your illustration background? I, I was curious about that since uh, I did a lot of that myself. I don't have a lot of professional experience in illustration. Okay. 
sadly. I wish I had more, but then well, animation qualifies, I guess, in a, yeah. in a way, especially backgrounds and and storyboards because uh, yes. storyboards are a crazy amount of work. So you end up uh, practicing a lot when doing storyboards. And even if I only did the cleanup step, uh, still you absorb a lot of stuff and you get mm. better at it. And and it's still really helpful to learn how to tell a story in in a sequence of images. So, so that was really um, interesting. I am trying to focus more on illustration now. Um, to be honest, until I started my video on YouTube and even then until perhaps a year ago, I didn't draw as much as I do now. Um, mm -hmm. I had like anxiety issues a lot and anxiety is such that it prevented me from drawing. I would get so mm -hmm. caught up in the anxiety that I couldn't do anything. Mm. And then I spoke to my doctor and I said, hey, doc, is this normal? And he said, nope. And he gave me like medication and now I'm feeling normal again <laughs> or at wow. least human enough. So. Um, with that feeling came like a, a, an instability to just be able to draw. So that's why I'm slowly getting back into this and I'm trying to, like I, I draw in many things and I try all kinds of renderings just in the hope of finding something that really ticks with me and that I can push further and yeah. have a style per se. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that, you know, you're getting the anxiety part under control. I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, for being a freelance businessman for years, uh, there are so many things that can kind of kill you, um, yeah. oh, <laughs> anxiety yeah. wise, you know, from who your next client's going to be, if you're even going to have one, to how you're going to pay the bills and all that stuff. So, and how, um, how, how they will pay you. Um, maybe you had a bit more luck in that sense, but I know that my timing was kind of terrible. I finished uh my school in 2006 so only what two years later there was this this recession thing so it became a bit more stressful even then because like you try to get paid a decent amount and the companies they don't even have that budget so they tell mm -hmm. you well that's nice but we have this budget so you hear like well okay i'm gonna take this budget because it's better some money than no money but it's super stressful because you always feel like you're you're like scavenging for scraps and it's tiring it's really tiring Boy, i sure know that feeling yeah <laughs> scavenging for scraps that's a great way to put it and, <laughs> and you know and it's it's like there are some clients out there that will appreciate your worth as an illustrator but they're hard to find or as a designer for that matter i think i probably did more design than illustration but you're so right i mean it's uh you have people all the time uh you know, oh, I love your talent. I think you do great. Would love you to do something for me, but hey, I really can't pay you much. Yeah. And there are illustrators everywhere that are getting sucked in by that. They think, well, if I just do this one job, you know, it'll get me to the next one. Yeah. But, but it's uh, not it's not a great service to anyone. But then again, gotta pay the bill and gotta get some food on the table. So what are yep. you supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, uh I think, and I don't know that it's unique to artists, but I know artists stress out a lot about their their work and whether or not, you know, it's, uh, there's just a lot of anxiety in general in our world. But, oh, yeah. you know, add to that the fact that you may be self-conscious or reluctant to uh, put yourself out there in terms of your artwork. And, mm -hmm. I mean, pe people are so nice in the art world, you know, usually considering that, uh, but you never know how they what they really think sometimes, right, Steve? I mean, <laughs> oh, somebody tells you, yeah. "Oh, that's a really great piece," and inside they're thinking, well, "That's the crappiest oh, yeah. thing I've ever seen." You know, unless they're paying you a lot of money, then then they'll tell you in a heartbeat what they think. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell you right away then. But you know, like if you're taught, if you, like if uh, so, as somebody who's participated in several art shows, you know, I'll, my piece will be up, and I like to go. Uh, to the art show and not even identify myself as the artist. I just like to walk up and listen to people talk about my art and they'll mm -hmm. say the most honest things. And I'll, I mean, it makes me kind of feel, you know, like uh, at least I'm getting an honest opinion because they don't yeah. know that the artist is standing right next to them. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That's right. And yeah, then like, right. if I really want to mess them up, like they'll say, they'll say something like, well, yeah, that one's okay. I don't really like it. It doesn't have the right color 
the composition is doesn't look right or something and they'll be talking to somebody else or it's just not my kind of art and i'll walk up and i'll say god i couldn't agree more what a piece of junk you know <laughs> just go along with play along with them and see what they say you know it's kind of mean and then at the end i'll go oh, i'm just kidding i drew that you know <laughs> and they'll be mortified you know yeah it's like oh yeah. well, we didn't well i mean it's nice to some people you know what I mean? It's like it's more fun to watch them backtrack. Yeah. But I don't care. I'd rather I'd rather have somebody give me their honest opinion. Yeah, the, the backpedaling is worth it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, it's a it it is stressful. I mean, and it is uh, you know, and then you want to run a YouTube channel and you know, I mean, if you get enough fans, Eve, on your YouTube channel, you probably already know this. Steve absolutely knows this, but <laughs> there's always just one dude that has to click dislike, you know? Oh, yeah. Just a oh, guy yeah. in his basement. He just likes to click dislike or it's say so something weird. really obnoxious, you know, like, yeah. you could have done a better yeah. job if you would have covered this obscure aspect, you know? Hater, haters are going to hate. And, you know, I stopped paying attention. I, I, I can honestly say this. I stopped paying attention to the dislike button. Oh, yeah. probably a year and a half ago uh oh, this yeah. june this the end of this june will be my fourth year and oh. probably almost two years ago i just stopped looking at it completely. <laughs> well the, the it, thing it doesn't is, make sense none of it yeah. makes sense and on mobile they don't even have it yeah <laughs> they you, they don't even have the dislike button so oh, they don't no and and it's a positive metric if you yeah. get a lot of dislikes they count that the same as <laughs> if you get a lot of likes so it's just interest yeah, it's just for fans, oh. you know. And you have a lot of these, you know, the million subscribers that do all this crazy stuff like Logan Paul, you know, and he probably on half his videos, he probably has as many dislikes as he has <laughs> likes. And it's just for fans. You should start a channel say, called, uh, oh, I like it. oh, I hate it, you know. Like Krabby Guy Steve's channel. You know? <laughs> Damn you all. I'll use house paint if I want to, damn <laughs> Just like crabby guy Steve. But uh, yeah, why not? Um, but anyway, I, I no, I and Eve, you you you've got your channel has grown quite a bit. Now I I bounced over to see you the other day. I think you have you're up over five thousand subscribers now. Yes. Which is quite a a big number. That's kind of the oh, first big it's leap insane. you make. First, it's a thousand, right? Yeah. And then, uh, first, it's one. First, it's, it's the well, very first one. Yeah. And I think then, that was, uh, I think I know who my first, very first. Yeah, I remember was. who my first subscriber was as well. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm in the first 100 at least because oh, I, I found you either early on because you subscribed and started leaving comments on my videos. Yeah. And Steve, see, so just to put it into perspective, Steve has been on four years on YouTube, and I don't know what he got like 130,000 subscribers. Steve, 43, 143,000, 143, yeah. So I've been on eight years, and I have about 26,000. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's uh, content is king on the internet. It's know? not. It's yeah. not as much content now. It's the the way YouTube. Uh, deals with the algorithms like if you yeah. upload frequently and yeah. often and all right well i'm gonna blame algorithms for now yeah yeah go ahead you, can. <laughs> you absolutely can marty i mean it it it's regular posting the the most of your traffic comes from youtube mm. suggestions oh really okay and, yeah, and see, they, i don't know anything they, about it so I yeah just... they put it they put it all in the algorithms and if they see you're doing it mm. you know mm -hmm. like this they'll say oh this is a channel we're making money off of this is a channel we're going to promote. So, yeah, yeah. he's yeah, absolutely true. right. Yeah, right. Oh, uh, hey, my buddy from, uh, uh, I think it's East Texas. So Essie is in the house. Hi, Essie. Uh, Essie Tangle. You don't maybe know her, but she's a real sweetheart. Um. So anyway, uh, well, that's good. Eve, tell us more about what got you, like. Uh, you know, everybody like Steve and I and others, we suffer from the same disease. Like we're compelled to draw. We <laughs> have to draw. If you, Steve, admit it, dude. If you go a week without painting or drawing, don't you feel like your soul is somehow diminished? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you got to do something. Just scribble, uh, if nothing else. You have, you're absolutely right. I feel like you've cheated yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Eve, how do you, uh, 
Uh, do you have that disease? And if so, how do you make sure you're giving it some medicine? I don't think I have that exact disease. I don't, um, I don't, I can go a long, long-ish stretch of time without drawing. I was many years without really drawing. I would always sketch and always study because I've, this has been so drilled in my brain in school that you have to practice regardless of if you feel like it. Just do ugly drawings. You have ten thousands of them to put out. So just, just draw, <laughs> just draw, 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 draw. But uh, what really uh, gets my brain rolling is when I have a problem to solve. Mm. So um, it's either mm. really wanting to create a specific scene, then I'm going to be, I'm going to roll on it, and it's going to be really good. Uh, the comic is the same. The comic I do with my boyfriend is the same deal. It's I take care of the more problem solving issues. So. I really love solving problems and that's why I love review and I love learning stuff because it gives you more tool, give me all the stuff so I can solve this problem. But when I'm left to myself with no problem to solve, I'm not, I don't really know what to draw. So that's why I, I kind of go back to the same couple of things like cats and I, I draw elves and you know I draw characters and doing expression like random stuff, but it's not driven by anything. It's just um, mindless practice because this is the only thing I know. And that that's the other yeah. side of it, is that I don't have any other skill. <laughs> if I don't draw, <laughs> I don't do nothing. So I got to keep working on this so I can hopefully get better and then have more opportunities to um, create work that will interest people. Mm -hmm. So that's basically my approach to it. I, I try to, um, like, that's why I, la I love the live stream so much I do on, on Saturday, is that interacting with the people in the chat often gives me idea because they will... Uh, one time they just said a number of words like rat, cat, mat, bat, like all, all that kind of words. And I took them all. And then I said, okay, I got to create a scene that uses all these words. So that uh -huh. was a problem to solve. And that's something I have no problem doing. But if there's nothing to solve, I'm useless. <laughs> I'm nothing. Well, so, I, yeah. 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 I really think that's the designer coming through in you because I can relate yeah, to that. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, design is... People who love to problem solve, I think, make good designers. And it's vis it's visual engineering, Marty. I mean, you're and engineering is nothing but problem solving, right? So yes. in a way, uh, design is the same way. And that was the one thing. I mean, I didn't necessarily love doing design for people, but I loved the problem solving. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, Eve, just a small housekeeping note for those of you that don't know Eve, you should check out Eve at at, at her channel. You could just go to YouTube and search for Eve Bolt. That's E V E space B O L T, and subscribe to her channel if you uh, would be so kind as to let others know about her. Share her videos. Um, that's that sharing is really important. So if you're on a social media platform um, like Facebook or another one, you know, just share her videos out. If you find one you like, make sure people know about her. Help spread the word about her work and and her videos and that that would be super helpful you know just find something you enjoy she's got a lot of content and so it's easy to find something to look for <laughs> and also valerie mentions here that eve's link is also in the description here so don't forget to check out uh eve's channel and uh we got plenty of time to go over some other stuff with you tonight eve but uh can you tell steve and i and the audience a little bit about like what are your favorite mediums like what what kind of art supplies do you like to use and not not just brand but you know what types um first thanks marty for the kind words um as for art supplies uh it's kind of a weird story i used to do watercolor many 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 years ago when i was a teenager because it was easy like i got the the pocket pocket <laughs> the pocket sketcher box by cotman and I mean, it was one of the only thing I could buy then. There was almost nothing at the store. So I got that and I just, I would draw, I would draw back then. And I would just use watercolor to put colors because I didn't have a computer. I didn't have any other way, easy way to put colors onto stuff. So I started in watercolor. And then I got into graphic design. And then I got into animation. And then I got into anxiety and work and all that. And I don't think I've, touch paints for like at least 10 years in that period of time. So before I started my, my channel, I had like, what, maybe 
10 tubes of watercolors, this is not the case anymore. <laughs> now I have many, many more. But um, yeah, I, I went back to watercolor because I had a great aunt, great aunt, anyway, a family relative that was a watercolorist and she sadly passed away, but she gave me all her stuff. So I took the stuff out of the boxes and started playing with it and looking at it and I realized that this was kind of great and it made me remember that I really love this medium and there's nothing as satisfying as having a brush full of pigment and just putting it on paper and seeing what happens. And it was a great timing because at the same moment I realized this, I was also pretty tired of spending time in front of a computer. Like all the work I did for animation was in front of computers and you're basically over a drawing tablet like this one, like what, eight hours a day, more than that. So you get all sorts of pains and it's just not great. And I was like, okay, you're gonna spend forever on, on your computer editing and working your videos. Mm -hmm. Try to make the art uh, traditional. So you don't have to spend 100% of your time on the computer. And that's mm. sort of how I fell in love again with watercolor. And I've tried gouache a bit. I have a bit of acrylics and I like all of these, but I still use them like I use my watercolors. So all in all, I guess I'm really more interested in the way watercolor work. And that's well, basically how I well, came Steve, around back to it. Steve loves that you said watercolor. If, yeah. he, if Steve hears watercolor, it releases endorphins. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and I want to I want to dig into that a little bit, Eve, because yeah. I noticed you've done a ton of uh, watercolor reviews. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are your favorites? Uh, what, favorite brands? Favorite. Your list of what you've reviewed and used. Hold on, that's a bit choppy. Can you repeat? Oh, he's just said? asking what uh, what oh, particular. Oh, I was just going to say. Go ahead, Steve. What what has of all of the watercolor that you've reviewed, mm -hmm. what's sort of rising to the top for you? What do you like the best at currently? Um, I really love everything. Like like I try I really tried because I would get you know, you got all sorts of opinion, like Lindsay hates chromium oxide green and other people will hate other colors and I took that into my brain, kept it in mind, but whenever I come across a color, I never go like, ugh, like, ugh, this texture is not great, or like, oh, I don't really like this paint. Um, I only just see a way I can use it. I'm like, ah, oh, this is an odd color, but it reminds me of the color of this thing. So brands, I really like uh, Schmincke and Daniel Smith and M. Graham and Sennelier, and I, like as long as it's professional range and delivers a lot of pigment if you want it to, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I I go through phases. It really depends. If I want to do something from reference, I will go to um, perhaps a smaller palette. Um, I'm trying to think of one I have set up, but I don't have any in mind. But I also like colors like Holbein because even if they have more mixes and like not, not that a mix is bad, but they have mixes with white. And that's weird sometimes when you have like a minty green that mixed with white. You're like, I don't really find a use for that when painting a landscape, but in illustration, it's really fun to use. Like you say, hey, I can have a whole picture that is themed with this color and I don't have to mix it every time. I just go to this spot in my palette with the color and mm. paint everything with that. And I needed a bit more blue. I had the blue in it, but it's not, the same mindset from one thing to the other. So sometimes I will put together a palette of 10 colors that I want to use at the moment and use that to paint from reference, but it really depends. Um, I think Daniel Smith has amazing colors, but I find them a bit hard to rewet sometime. And other like M. Graham have an insane color payload, but you can more or less travel with them. It's a bit more risky. And I've changed my hem gram from palettes a couple of times, and I really hope I don't have to do this again because I, I end up with paint everywhere. That <laughs> the, the turquoise color is the worst. It's just the stainiest color. If you in the want world. really risky, if you want but, really risky, you travel with M. Graham and Steve Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Very risky. That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I come with a warning label attached to everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that warning label, Steve? Let's show us. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, 
Eve, those are great. I think those are great selections. Um, Steve may have some more questions for you. Well, but have yeah. you, Well, have you ever done like a, like I did a top 10 watercolor video not long ago, and have you ever done anything like that? I don't think I could. <laughs> I well, would be it's like. It's hard to narrow it down. Oh, but I would be like, mm, okay, so this brand is really awesome for this, this, and this, but this one is also really awesome for these other reasons. And when I feel like painting this kind of subject, I go to this one. So I, well, I, I saw I, one. I yes. saw one though that you did that was like, this brand bites the big one. I mean, you didn't put it that way, but it was uh, Pebio. Oh, no, the, the disaster <laughs> brand. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, well, but that, your, that's your, reviews look, your reviews Sorry. look pretty useful, I think. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I tried. So what did you <laughs> like about the PBO brand? What 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 did you find? Oh, it, it was just the worst paint I horrible. have ever used. Like it, even worse than Cutman, in my opinion. Mm. <laughs> because you know the you know when you can the more paints you use, the more you can tell when a paint is mostly binder. Not necessarily just filler, but like Cotman, you can see that it's a lot of binder because it gets like gelatinous and and the PBO were like that, but with a fillers in them as well, like chalky chalky fillers. And you would I couldn't I couldn't get any uh, richness of color. The colors were super light, super flat. Uh, really like like I can I don't mind that it's student paints, like the Equifine paints are awesome, but um these PBO supposedly professional paints were absolutely useless. It's what? it's rubbish, really. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious. This, that kind of leads me to another question: Is what what got you into? I know you mix your own paints. Oh yeah, you make your own paints, and yeah. I thought that was fascinating. Uh, I would love to know what started you doing that, and uh, um, you know. Why, how, do you plan to continue with that or, or, you know, what's, what's your, your background in that? How did you learn to do that? Why do you do it? Whatever you want to tell us. Oh yeah, sure. Um, it, it sort of links back to what I was saying about uh, wanting to solve problems is that the more paint I used, the more curious I got about why it is this way. And the only way you can sort of find out why the paint is this way is to see how it's made. So I started looking into how paint is made, especially watercolor. And then I realized that it was basically just pigment, gum arabic, honey. And I was like, oh, that's that's not too complex, you know? And then uh, the more I looked about it, I realized that there was a pigment shop, like not so far from here, like wow. literally not far from my place. So I was like, huh, okay. Um, all right. So I was like, wait, 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 wait. Don't do this thing you always do buy a few pigments first and see if you can MacGyver something to try the process, see if you like it. And if you like it, then you can buy the muller and the glass lab and you know the equipment and the masks and all that. And I was like, okay, fine. So I did a um, series of video to, to record my, my process in a way. And I really started, I MacGyvered kind of a, it was a spice pot with a blue tack and a glass marble on top to use as a muller. So really like, I tried to spend as little money as I could to see if I liked it. And with this kind of weird thingy, I was able to mix some paint. So I was like, huh, it's not really complex. And I enjoyed the process, but then I got more curious. So I decided to invest in the rest of the equipment. And I really enjoyed the process of making paint because you get to see, uh, to appreciate perhaps more all the works that goes into the paints that you can buy. Like some pigments are really problematic to mix and others are like breeze. So like Prussian blue is a color that I find difficult to mold. So whenever I see a tube of Prussian blue, even if it's a series one, I'm like, huh, okay, mad props because you can achieve this texture and I know the kind of work it represents and it's not nothing. So it sort of gave me a better understanding of the way the tools I like to use are made. And if I could learn how to make a brush, I would, I mean, I love knowing this stuff because then you can solve more problems because you understand how mm. it all works. And that's that's the part that I like. So yeah, I, I will, I will, I, I don't have any choice but to continue making paints if only for all the pigments I have. But um Well, you're selling it on Etsy, so you must be pretty happy with 
what you've come up with. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was part of the idea as well. It was if I can make paints that I find good, that I'm proud enough of, that I don't feel like bad for, for selling it, I will sell the extra pans I make so that I can um, like take a bit of money back from what it cost me. So um, like if I can earn money back to pay the, the tools I had to buy, it was worth it. And yeah, and I, I really tried to make paints that I'm happy with, that I'm proud of, so I don't feel bad selling them. And if there are any issues, because unlike companies, I don't have a big window of time to test the paints. Like sometimes they dry really brittle after many months. So you're like, oh, that's something I couldn't have figured out. So hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm really like, like, I appreciate the feedback. And if there's an issue, I will. It's like a big experiment as a group rather than just me. But sure. yeah, it's been awesome. It's been really great. Yeah, fits into your problem solving. Yeah, yeah, I like know, it. <laughs> framework, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, that's cool. That's that's really neat. Mm. Yeah, well, um, I'm supposed to figure out some good ways to make Eve laugh because everybody really enjoys uh, her laugh. She's uh, oh, wow. got a very <laughs> nice laugh. So. I gotta figure out some good jokes to tell or something. Not but, when um, I'm drinking, please. <laughs> that, you know, that, that, it goes everywhere. But uh, you know, that's another thing that um, really attracted me to your channel, Eve. Is that well, first of all, you explain the process pretty well. When I decided to make my um, my paint, I took a crack at that. There's a video out there. I uh, I went to your channel, and you you had commented on that video that you'd already done some of this, so. I went and watched your videos and uh, it was pretty amazing. And I liked how you explained the process in sort of in, in, a, in a mostly scientific way, <laughs> you know, about answering some questions. And you could tell that you took a very like an engineer's or a problem solver's approach to it, which is somewhat unique for an artist. You know, um, not to say that artists can't do that, but uh, we tend to creatively express ourselves mm -hmm. and so I, f I found that fascinating. And um, and also your engaging personality, your laughter, your ability to laugh at life and laugh at yourself. Those are <laughs> good qualities that oh, they make you. a big difference. Yeah. I, I, well, they make a difference for life, too. I, I, in, in that regard, I got a question for you. Is there a story behind the cats? <laughs> I know yeah. you have a couple of cats. Is yeah, there is there something more? Um, I just really, really like cats. Okay. I I've gather always, that much. I've always did. I forgot. Just to tell you how bad the anxiety got, I forgot that I loved cats. Like, oh. <laughs> it just, there was no room even for that super important part of my life when I was in the height of my anxiety. So having no more anxiety brought brought back all this and also I have cats now so um having them and seeing them do all the stupid stuff cat do it's just so inspiring to me because I can I like to make them talk and I like to create scenes with them and it's I think it's again linked to the problem solving like the trying to create something out of a set of constraints so I, I just love this and also I, I find it like if I don't feel like drawing a human, because I'm like, Ugh, humans, I see them, I see them every day, and I'm really sick of them. Um, <laughs> I, I just draw cats because you know cats are great. Cats, they, they're soft and they purr and they're cute. So it's sort of a, a way that I can still draw but not feel bogged down. But I have yeah. to draw a human and the proportions of a human. And like, blah, I can just draw well, a cat and be done with that, it. This is pretty interesting. I mean, I think that's kind of a cat story, don't you, Marty? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> It's fun. I uh, yeah. I was just gonna say that you. Um, thank you for having the courage, Eve. Also to not only you know come out to the world on on this channel and with Steve and I. I mean, in terms of just your presence, I don't mean to say you're coming out. I, I don't know. Why I said <laughs> don't get that mixed up, people. But you're. Um, <laughs> but just to have that courage and then to talk about your struggle with anxiety, I think it's a it's really important that other people in the world not be, you know, ashamed or afraid to talk oh, yeah. about the things they struggle with. I mean, yeah, we I all agree. do to whatever degree we have to struggle with our own demons. We all have them. And whether it's self doubt or anxiety or paralyzing 
fears or depression or, or whatever. Depression, it is. Yeah. People uh, struggle. Of, yeah, one of the best things I think, and I get the most positive comments, I think this is true for any YouTuber, is you got to humanize yourself. If you don't humanize yourself on your channel, you know, you're just this, uh, you know, automaton that people can't relate to. So it's, it's really great. Uh, yeah, I, I echo what Marty said. It's great to share those things. Yeah. And the backstory and, and even the difficulties that you face with personal and with art, you know. Mm. Yeah. So. Thank you for that, Eve. And that, um, Eve, if you're okay with it, would you, would you be okay taking some questions from well, yeah, sure. uh, the viewers in the chat room and yeah, yeah, yeah. um because we hire valerie for uh, it she's very expensive so <laughs> i like to make sure that we're getting the very best uh, from her you know as we go along here but yeah so yeah. if you guys have a question valerie will show you how to format your questions P please feel free to ask eve a question about her work or her channel or anything you want to know about her and uh yeah, she it sounds like you'd be happy to answer, Eve. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, in the meantime, uh, let's say, okay, so Grace is asking a question here. Um, can you show Pico and Scout? Oh, <laughs> that's my cats. They're sleeping. Do you, do you have, like, uh, pictures of them, Eve, or a little painting handy you can show us? No. Maybe show them. Excellent. Perhaps on well, my phone. Well, go to her Instagram. Go to her Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to my Instagram. It's Eve Bolt all, all together. There are really all kinds of cat pictures. And in the recent ones, they have like the stupid hats on. Like one is a banana hat and one is a carrot hat that I got from <laughs> Japanese kind of like, like you know, the, the machines that you put money in and they give you a capsule. Well, in Japan, they have all sorts of really awesome capsules and some of some are cat hats so i got two of them and i got a banana and a carrot and i put them on my cats and that that's been great <laughs> yeah, so, so i got a comment marty sure um i was uh watching your uh sketchbook tour uh last night i think it was uh okay. eve and uh i absolutely love your little landscape studies Thank you've you. got You've got to do more of those <laughs> for me, if for nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> no, me too. I, I, I agree. I, I like those. Those are some of my favorite uh, things that Eve does. I, um, I'll admit that I'm not a, a huge cat person, although I we have a cat here at the house. Bless um, me. His name is Elvis. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. But, but I mostly have, have grown up with dogs. I like the dogs, uh, you know, because – Cats, I mean, dogs are your man's best friend, and then cats, they're like you're their staff, you know. Oh, yeah, they just you, they just don't need you very much, just you know, they, they need you for food, so yeah, yeah. And right. well, I, I can see that that little problem solving aspect of you coming through. I see you working out these nifty little compositions and playing with values, and you're doing them in these nifty little, you yeah. know taped off squares that is so valuable and so uh instructional to yourself yeah but they're just neat to see i mean Thanks. they're simple but yet poetic so do some more <laughs> another question coming in here so a question from geconia uh question what's the largest watercolor you've all painted i love working small and could use some encouragement to try something bigger Half sheet for me is the largest I've done, really. I think half sheet of well, what water. size is that, Steve? It's 15 by 20, roughly. I don't work so like really a C really size much. or a, it's bigger than a B yeah, it's size. It's bigger, yeah, it's bigger than tabloid. But okay, I may have done one back in school, I don't know, but I don't get bigger than a half sheet usually. It's oh, just sure. not comfortable to me. Oh, gotcha. How about you, Eve? I don't paint really big either. I think I did an illustration once on um, B11 by 14, but it was like an illustration in the middle of the sheet. So I don't, I'm not sure it counts. <laughs> I don't, I don't like to paint big either. I don't have the well, space for it anyway. So. Yeah, I, 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 I am, I am, 
I am totally with Geconia. I, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, but I want to paint bigger, but I can never figure out what to put on that big <laughs> piece of paper. It just yeah. seems overwhelming. Yeah. However, however, I do, um, I do like the idea of it. And one guy I saw, he just has a collection of little vignettes on a big. Oh yeah. So he does a big, huge canvas, but he just does little pieces on the canvas mm -hmm. until it's full. And yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but uh, yeah, there, um, I forget the Swedish artist. His name is Lars, of course, but I can't remember his last name, but he paints really huge, like on rolls. Oh, wow. Like on, on roll and they'll unroll it and he'll just paint. And he's a magnificent painter. So it's pretty spectacular to see. But, um, you know, especially. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Marty. No, no. Especially, especially on YouTube, it's hard to paint big. Yeah. Um, because you have to change your whole setup and I, I think there are some advantages to it if i were just painting uh and didn't have to make videos um you know it makes you paint in certain ways and it develops you in certain directions but you know they're the i just you know i think a lot of us just tend to kind of work to the smaller kind of camera frames that we have to i don't know if y'all agree or not yeah, I think that uh, especially if you're doing studies, the smaller format is more practical because you don't get focused on the details because you cannot put details in there. So you're just like big shape, big shape, composition, colors, values, and you focus on what's important. You're not like, oh, this second leaf over there is this shape. It's not relevant to the size you work. So that's kind of why I like to do studies in super small format because mm -hmm. I have to come packed and condensed information so but yeah that's well, that's just some, oh okay well we got some more questions coming in um Otto Cano Cano says a question besides cats what's your favorite <laughs> animal to paint oh wow um birds yeah birds yeah, yep, yep. Birds? definitely. Yeah, uh, wild birds. Not a good idea to mix the two cats. No, and birds, I know. But, uh, <laughs> um, so, other than Grace Blosser asks, other than mint green, which is best, what's your favorite color? Um, I really like Rose Mather by Holbein. It's kind of this uh, cool muted red, but like not really pinkish but not really red and uh, i know it's a fugitive color but for illustration that's not really relevant because you scan it and mm -hmm. you make prints of it so um it's one of my favorite colors um i really li i, I kind of like all the colors but if i have to pick only one it would be that rose mother nice cool. uh, rebecca page asks a question do any of you prefer painting in books over painting for wall or display, and I, I, I'm gonna assume she means sketchbooks. Mm. You have a preference, Steve? I don't really, not right now. I'm painting more in books since I started my channel, um, probably because I'm doing more studies now than I used to do. Uh, I, you know, I think that's part of trans me transitioning out of a commercial illustrator role where you know you got to kind of get down to it and and get the art done uh but i really started enjoying when i started this channel i started enjoying doing more studies so i'm doing more in sketchbooks than i ever used to but i don't have a preference i still like doing fin finished paintings on loose sheets you know how about you eve uh very similar i like i like books for studies and sketches and practicing I find it easier because you have everything kept together. So when it's done, you just store it away together. You don't have a lot of sheets loose. But um, I've been really enjoying doing the paintings for the um, Animal Artists Collective. And that's that's different. That's paintings that are made to be sold, hopefully, so that the profits can, well, part of the profits can be used to be given to a charity. So it's been a different challenge, and I've been really enjoying it to paint something on a sheet that that is meant like you have to think of the the colors light fastness the 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 way the paper will behave and uh, how's it gonna make sure it stays flat and all kind of stuff so um yeah. 
yeah, it's not the same approach to a sketchbook or a sheet, but both are fun in their own way. I've been enjoying oh. watching all of those animal collecting oh, yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, some great stuff. I really liked your fishing cat. Oh, thank you. That was very nice. It was a pretty <laughs> interesting composition. So, Thanks. Marty, are you familiar with the Animal Artists Animal Collective? No, animal artists not, collective. <laughs> you guys have mentioned it now. I'll have to go check it out. It's yeah. just, uh, like a YouTube rabbit hole for me, or it's, it's a well, Facebook rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, Val, you can tell people in the chat who all is in it. But Val, Eve, Denise Soden at In Liquid Color. We're going to do a live with her coming up soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, Oh, uh, who else? Who else, Eve? There's a uh, Jennifer Charlie. There is a uh, Sadie Shadi from Sadie Saves the Day. Um, Amy Howard. I don't want to miss anyone, but it's a uh, cat from yes. Daniel Capal. Yeah, you take guest uh, artists from time to time too. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Capal. All right, so we got another question in here. Valerie is uh, going to ask you. So we have to give the moderator a little bit of time here. <laughs> she asked the question, Eve, what kind of goals do you have for your art and your channel uh, for the next couple of years? Um, for the channel, I really want to keep growing it. Uh, I want to keep evolving it also to fit what I want to do because I have to keep in mind that I got to keep the channel fun for me to do. Otherwise, it's not worth it. So whenever I feel bogged down or like uninspired by the videos, it just means that I got to take a moment to step back and think about what would be fun to do. So yeah, I want to keep growing it and I want to keep it about paint and painting stuff. That's really important to me. But as far as my own uh, art is concerned, I really want to get to a point where I have a style that is consistent enough that I can feel more secure in in doing perhaps illustration freelance. Like the, the thing is the way I was taught in school is you have to match the demand. So you have or you always have to adjust yourself to what someone wants. But that means that when you're left to your own, you're sort of empty ended. You you have nothing. You're like, well, I have to fit to something, but there is nothing there. So I've been in the process of trying to find what is me in all that. So hopefully I will keep on working on that and finding it and then get more comfortable with my own art. Such and a great that's such a great point about illustration. <laughs> a great point. Uh, yeah. You know, it's I was one of those, I mean, you know, we had children right off the bat and before I was even 30 we had oh. four kids. Wow. You know, and so I'm having to take any job that comes along and most of them a lot of them are not me. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you, you know, when you are left to you, you know, who are you? You yeah. know, you're not who that guy Good hired. Point. So yeah. it's like, wow, great point. Yeah, perfect. So a couple of more, uh, the questions are coming in fast and furious. So I want to cover <laughs> these. There, well, there's some really good ones here. So Jesse uh, from Foboy Studios. Uh, question for landscapes. What are some books or resources to explore techniques? I'm more interested in environmental studies often watercolor books show loose landscapes What are some interesting options? Great question if if you're wanting to go opposite of loose uh, try Ray Hendershot uh, it's a, There's a book called What's the name of that book? Um, Easy watercolor paint texture and their crazy paints oh i think i have that one yeah Aha <laughs> Te <laughs> texture techniques for winning watercolors <laughs> oh sure it's a it's a great book yeah especially if you're wanting to move away from loose and he's just got some i mean he's a fantastic artist and he's just got some great tips and techniques in there so, um, Eve, uh, just because people like to hear your laugh, I have to tell you a story about um, when I was in the Army, I was about, I think I was about 19 years old. And I think you, I might have shared this, but I go uh, to Paris with some buddies of mine from the Army. 
and um, we find this cafe because we're all really hungry, you know, and it's an outdoor cafe. And I, I might have told you this already, but I think we did. we uh, we were starving and uh, a bunch of soldiers, you know, we're not very good ambassadors for America. You know, we're just a <laughs> bunch of hungry GIs. But we went to this cafe and it was really nice. It was a nice day out. And um, the waiter came and he gave us menus, but none of us speak French. And we don't really understand what the menu says. And the waiter was very unhelpful. Like he does not speak uh, English. He, you know, can't understand us. And we're trying to make, you know, <laughs> sign American sign language to him. Burger, <laughs> burger. And you know how Americans are just, you know, they're dopey. So when they don't think you understand them, they just go, burger, burger. <laughs> they just yell at you louder. The same dumb thing they're trying yeah. to say, right? Oh, yeah. So anyway... <laughs> We, we we ordered what we thought was decent food from the menu, or we just guessing. I mean, if it sounded like steak, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we this guy that I was with, they brought him out a plate, and it was a big, round, white plate, and it had like 10 or 15 peas on it and some chocolate sauce decorated across the plate. What? And he goes, he's like, what the hell? I'm starving, man. I'm starving. <laughs> I need some good food, you know? And so the waiter who never spoke English was standing nearby and he came over and in almost perfect English, he says, if you want good food, you go to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was my story. <laughs> Pe peas and chocolate sauce. I don't know what the hell it was, uh, but it looked weird. So it anyway, doesn't sound great. So where Did do you, you think we ended up going? Yeah. McDonald's. You've been eating at McDonald's yeah. ever since, right? <laughs> we went to McDonald's. Yeah. So it was delicious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so, uh, well, I think we got some more questions, Eve. What source can you recommend if you want? This is Vaughn Emmett. What source can you recommend if you want to move from tight to loose, Steve? So on the other end of the yeah. spectrum. Um, Try direct watercolor. I'm getting ready to enter that challenge, by the way. And it's a little intimidating to me, but uh, direct watercolor by Mark, Marco, Marco, Mark Taro Holmes. Mm. Just look up on Amazon, look up uh, direct watercolor. I think he self published the book, but you can get it. He's a good one. Um, he's a really talented one. And he's a Montrealer, I think. Is he? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, subscribe to uh, Ann Laurie at Following the White Rabbit. Um, she does a really good job. Uh, loose uh, for loose. There's a guy um, called uh, also on YouTube. He's an illustrator. He does all kind of stuff, but he does these neat little landscapes. His name is Marco Bucci or Buki, B U C C I. Oh, there's a ton. Uh, I, yeah. I right now I'm not thinking of books. I'm thinking of YouTube channels. Uh, <laughs> Nitin or Nitin Singh S I N G. Somebody else on the chat may <laughs> may know what it is. Nitin Singh S I. It's hilarious hearing you try to pronounce it though. <laughs> S I N G H. I think it's like Sing. It's like Sing with an H in there somewhere. Is it? Hearing Steve in North Carolina or South Carolina trying to pronounce these some of these names is hilarious. I, I'm, not, I'm no better in Minnesota. You want, me to talk, you want me to talk about talk like a real South Carolinian? I can do that. Man. <laughs> I I can do that in a hot beat. Well, wait, hang on, Steve. I got to get my banjo. <laughs> I think if if you want to get more used to painting loose, I think you could just grab a really big brush. And try oh, to paint the point. same thing, and you're not going to be able to. So it will perhaps force you to think on how you can use yeah. the big strokes to to make sense rather than. Yeah, yeah Heather I in the chat with a has cat. the right name, Nitin Singh. And uh, oh, so, so uh, that I think we addressed most of the questions. If we missed any, we apologize for that. Um, we're nearly out of time with Eve tonight, but we've had a lot of fun. Eve, can you help us wrap up the program by telling us 
what types of channels and uh, the folks that you like to go and look at uh, on YouTube? Uh, I like everything. I really like um, uh, painting channels, um, mostly watercolors. I've tried to watch a couple of videos about acrylic and I, I don't relate as much to the stuff. So um, a lot of painting channels, and then I really like, um, I watch a lot of uh, informative videos, uh, either in French or in English, and I really enjoy uh, <laughs> watching and listening to uh, weird conspiracy videos. Like that, that's, my, um, <laughs> that's my guilty pleasure. It's the weird conspiracy stuff because it's so creative and so weird. And, and the things that, the, the way that people will give credit to something, like it's, it's almost storytelling. So I find it interesting for that because I'm like, well, I don't believe really any of this, but it's fascinating how they have all these elements that they put together to create sort of a cohesive story. And and it's just like, always, it's always surprising with the kind of stuff that people come up with. And you're like, oh, okay, why? Um, I didn't expect that. That's, that's, yeah, sure, aliens did it. Yep, yep, all right, good. And I really like that. So, um, but then again, I don't have as much time for YouTube as I did before. So I have a long, 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 long queue of videos to watch. And I'm so sort of late on everything. But um, mm. yeah. You and could binge I watch. Sorry? Well, you, I was going to say you could binge watch. But the other thing I was going to add there is that you shouldn't be surprised about all of these conspiracy channels because I read yesterday um, that. Uh, like 38% of Americans think that the planet Earth revolves oh. around the sun. Oh. And, uh, or the sun revolves around the Earth, I mean. Yeah. And then, and like, and like 21% uh, of them believe that the Earth is flat. <laughs> including, <laughs> including some prominent athletes <laughs> that uh, Steve oh, is yeah. probably fr familiar with from the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> what? What are you? Are you telling me the Earth is not flat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd go to the end and try to find out if I were you, Steve. You know? <laughs> take your take your sketchbook with you just in case, you know. <laughs> but that's right. That's uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, yeah, we're getting dumber down here. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 sixty one percent of Americans believe that Canada is the fifty first state. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, uh, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> what can um, I say? I know that Steve mentioned perhaps wanting to discuss a bit about the comic. I don't know if there is time yes. for that. Oh yeah, yes. sure. Shoot. Yeah, but, I I got started on that, and I think it's fantastic. And thanks. I mean that because I've seen a lot of self published comics and. A lot of them aren't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about what, that. What's that, Steve? Wait a second. Wait, what, what did you say? I just said I've seen a lot of self-published comics, and a lot of them aren't good. This one is oh, pretty good. Oh, sure. Yeah. I didn't know about I didn't know you did this, Eve. Where did I miss this? What's going on? Can you show <laughs> me it? Uh, where, uh, yeah, can you it's... hold a book up or something? Let us see. Oh, I don't have any books nearby. I saw they're, the digital. I the, saw the digital version. Yeah, it's it's on it's it's on the web. You can check it. the The address is just gonna make sure, but it's um, the thief of tales altogether dot com, and it's basically a comic that uh, my boyfriend and I were doing. Um, it started know. as a project that he said he just wanted to challenge challenge himself to doing a certain number of comic pages, and. Uh, the thing is, is that he is really good, like he's good at most art things, but he has some really strong points that are not the same as my strong points. So when he was working on his stuff, um, he, has, he, he asked me for advice on certain things that I was more, um, more decisive on. So we realized that together we can sort of really make this work in a way that is fun. So I helped him with the first 20 pages. And then we decided to just keep it going. And I write the story and I do the thumbnails and the rough pages. And he takes that and he makes the finished pages. So combining our strength. This. this is amazing. I'm looking yeah. at this right now. Yeah, it's yeah, good. combining. It's good, isn't it, Marty? 
It's very, very it's, good. It's really pretty. <laughs> he does all the art, so I can say that, and I feel good about it. No, but, but I, um, see your, I see your animation training coming through because yeah. the storytelling is good. It's not important just to draw great characters. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. You've got some good storytelling. That's what I like. Like I really, I sat down and I said, what can I do? Like, well, you know TV stuff, so try to make this using your TV stuff knowledge. So I set it out as chapters, and like a chapter is like an episode, and I wrote down the episodes, and the whole thing has a sort of a main story throughout. So it was a super fun challenge, and we just told ourselves, like, well, let's just try this. It, we can try. I mean, we've never tried before. Let's try. So we tried it, and now we really like it. So um, I'm really glad, and I'm proud of this, because um, I feel like for someone who has read so many comics over all my life, like I've always, always read comics, either the French bande dessinée or comics or web comics or any kind of sequential art I really like. So to be able to create something that is sequ se sequential art is really meaningful to me and important. And I really like it. It's a lot of work, but I really, it, it, it feeds in my problem solving thing. So it's, it's perfect. I solve the basic problems, and if there are more problems, we fix them. So it's all about problems on my side. And when it stops being about problem and making it pretty, I give it off to the boyfriend. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's it's a really fun ride, and it's nice. It seems to like you guys are publishing that. about a page a week. Yeah, that's that's the standard webcomic base, that's sadly. Pretty dang good. But. Um, yeah, it's it's always more interesting to read a bunch of pages at once, but mm. yeah, mm. this is awesome. Uh, yeah, that, it, that was a that was a delightful discovery. Yes. Oh, thanks for dropping that link in there, Steve. I was just gonna do that. That's beautiful work. I thank you. That's really cool, Eve. Um, I've been actually working on a graphic novel for about five years now. Oh, <laughs> I wow. just can't get past <laughs> page two. <laughs> so I'm such a jerk, Jesus. But uh, yeah, so I feel cheap now. Also, Eve, you broke everybody's heart on the in the chat room when you said you had a boyfriend, Jesus. Uh, that well, they knew, they knew that. Uh, oh, they, they knew. knew? Okay. Yeah, Mr. E. Uh, Eve. Okay, Mr. E. I got it. Mr. E. All right, I understood. And his name is Mr. Bonnet. Yeah. He has ah, a really good. French name, Guillaume Bonnet. He does. Guillaume. Yeah. Okay. Hey, if you had a French name, Steve, what would it be? I don't know. Stefan Esteban. No, that's Spanish. Stefan or something. Well, well the, the, the French of, of Steve is Stefan, isn't it? Stefan, yeah. is uh, it? I so. But uh, he could pick his own name, you know, like his own French name. Like uh, <laughs> it would probably be Pierre Lombat or something like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what would be yours marty what's that uh, what would oh, be yours I, I have no idea <laughs> I that's know. not french i have no idea is not french <laughs> martin i have no idea yeah. <laughs> that'd be my name uh well eve this has been awesome i yeah. love the comic work i love your channel people Thank should you. go and subscribe to your channel and get to know you binge watch some videos we got a long <laughs> memorial day weekend down here in the united states so it's not like there's a ton to do so right steve <laughs> somebody could binge watch the channel and uh that'd be cool <laughs> mm, yeah and also subscribe and share uh you know eve's channel if you could if you wouldn't mind thank um, you yeah no it's been really great having you on the show and um yeah to Steve and I, we don't have really have a studio for our show per se. No, I mean, Steve, no. Steve, do you remember? Uh, do you ever watch Seinfeld, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when Kramer got the set of the Merv Griffin? Remember when he got the Merv Griffin set out of the trash? Yeah. Oh, vaguely. Yeah, vaguely. we need to get that, Steve. We need to get like <laughs> you know, a morning show set from the seventies. <laughs> but we yeah, live we, we live, live a long way apart. But yeah. uh, you know. Through the miracle of the interweb. Yeah, yeah. You're in the in Minnesota, and I'm in South Carolina. So, yeah. And Eve's winters last as long as our winters here. So, yeah, it's a 
It's like long. today. What what is today? May something? What is we? May twenty fourth. Yeah. Yeah, May twenty fourth, and this is like the first eighty degree day in Minnesota. Oh, wow! Oh, wow. It was warm today. People were humid. They're like, "Give me a break! This is eighty degrees is killing me." <laughs> I was, Steve, I was, I was Steve talking. Steve takes showers at eighty degrees, right? <laughs> yeah. I was talking to my <laughs> uncle who lives in Phoenix yesterday, and they're expecting a hundred tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it hot. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, thanks to everybody who joined the show tonight and uh, hope that you can visit us again. I think the next show, Steve, will be over on your channel and our special guest will be... I think the next one will be Denise Soden oh, yay. At, uh, in Liquid Color, although she and I have communicated about it. We haven't set a date, so that will be fun and interesting. And yep. uh, I've, Yeah, she's uh, great. I'm looking Jeez. forward to that. It's really, really lovely to meet you, Eve, and get well, to know likewise. you. Well, uh, likewise. This has been so great. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I love deepening the ties. Love deepening the ties to the YouTube watercolor community. That's what it's all about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Eve, I, yeah, I mean, Steve summed it up there, but thank you for for your discussion, for your courage, for coming out and talking about, you know, your your own life and how it connects you to art and just your experience and journey. Pretty good. I, I feel blessed to know you and, you know, we've had a lot of good interactions over the yes. uh, past few years and it's been fantastic. I'm glad you could, you could join us um, tonight. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm truly honored because I mean, I remember both of your channels and, and you as persons from when I first got into YouTube and, I mean, you both are reasons why I'm doing this because I was like, hey, these guys are great and I love the kind of stuff they do. So um, it's inspiring. So uh, awesome. <laughs> we all awesome. we all help each other. So that, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Sure. You bet, Eve. Our, and, uh, our pleasure. So don't forget to, again, check out Eve's channel, Eve Bolt. You can check her out on Instagram uh, as well as, I think, other social media platforms. <laughs> and don't forget to check out... Uh, you know, her comic work. I mean, that is, is really first rate. So go check it out at the thief of tales dot tumblr dot com. Is that yeah, right? Or just dot com? com. Both, and both just, addresses are good. It's on Tumblr. Don't forget to uh, check out my partner in crime, Steve at the mind of watercolor. You will be blown away by the work <laughs> Steve does, the videos he has, the education that he gives you basically for free. I mean, and if you're really cool, you'll go over to check Steve out on Patreon. Um, that's where he's got about, I don't know, 4.6 million followers <laughs> right now. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too soon, Steve, but I know you're working on some double secret stuff uh, with uh, wet paint and Daniel Smith, and maybe we'll talk oh, yeah. about that. That's just oh, a little yeah. teaser. But, oh, yeah. uh, hey, Steve has gone big time, people. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you're going to see some... Uh, Steve will be on like uh, you know the Tonight Show or something, you know. But he's he's going big time and uh, and deservedly uh, so and deservedly so. Um, uh, thanks, Marty. Your checks in the mail. <laughs> well, hey man, I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, no, I really appreciate everybody who joined us tonight. And don't forget to look out for the next Steve and Marty show, yeah. uh, where we'll we'll be bringing you more awesome guests from our art community. And thanks a lot to our friend and really, really, really cool person, Valerie Canal from Drawing With Fire. She has been a moderator on every single episode I've ever had on YouTube that was live. I think I have three, Steve. So, <laughs> But she also helps you out as well. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Val. Yeah. And she gives me lots of tips too about like, you know, different stuff. So yeah, I, I love Val. All right. Uh, that's pretty, pretty much it for tonight. I know we're getting late on the East coast, so we'll let you guys, <laughs> you guys get to bed. It's only nine o'clock here in the Midwest, man. Party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Good hey, night, everybody. Yep. For, for the mind of watercolor for Eve Bolt. 
And for Owings Art, this is Marty saying so long. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.